Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So first off, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my Patreon supporters, Ben. Thanks for your support. Now it's been a week and a half since my last video, and of course the end of summer has now uh, finished, and all the kids are back to work. However, Gamer Dad is also back to work as of version 2.13.500, Wanderer in the Vortex, Fatum Argentari. And so if you haven't checked out um, the official Eden Global Channel and their live stream a couple of days ago, make sure you check it out. Uh, they did give some uh, information about uh, the upcoming units as well as to, as to what to expect with this self-contained um, apocrypha, so to speak. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So of course, being that this is a notice, um, the update should come about 24 hours from now. Note that it is a new game update, so you will have to go to the App Store or the Play Store. And hopefully for us iOS users, we do get it a little bit earlier than 24 hour notice, usually about two hours earlier than that. Okay, so I understand that all the Apocryphas are self-contained, and so I don't know if you have to necessarily have finished um, the old Apocrypha, and you can clearly see underneath that you do not have to finish chapter one. So they are self-contained, which is quite nice. However, you do have to have the prologue so that you have met, um, spoiler alert, Nona, which is a, a free four star that you can get upon finishing the prologue. And you do have to finish chapter 22 of the main story for those who are newer to the game. Obviously, if you are a veteran, you've probably finished all the way up to chapter 84, among other side events and quests, and so you'll be ready to go when this update hits. Now that being said, a lot of people are waiting for this particular banner, and it contains Alma, our new alchemist 5-star unit, that's a gacha unit. Uh, we'll see who she's paired with, although I believe in the Japan banner, she was paired with Mistrar, which is another crystal-type unit. So Alma is our only, um, I guess, unit that can um, start up Shiny Crystal Stance, aka Crystal Zone. We already have, um, obviously, um, the Thunder Zone, which was Orlea. And so this is our first and only unit in both Japan and Global that can do this. And so um, Crystal Zone works a little bit different from other zones. Now, one interesting thing about Crystal Zone is that when Alma establishes Zone, you do get the full 7.5% AF gain from both crystal moves and from other elemental moves. So this is very unique compared to um, most uh, zones where, for example, fire zone, you can only use fire moves to kind of charge the zone. In this case, any elemental move, so non non elemental moves will not work, but any elemental move will charge the bar the normal amount of 7.5% in zone. However, what happens is that in crystal zone, it increases your damage by 30% for all crystal moves. It reduces all other element damage moves by 30%. However, crystal zone allows you to exploit weaknesses. So if you are fighting an enemy who has a weakness, it gives you 80 additional percent damage against enemies weak. So overall, what that means is these are additive. So if it is weak to crystal, for example, you're going to have 110%, that is 30 plus 80% against a weak crystal and against enemies weak to any other element that you happen to be using you'll get a 50% boost so this zone is not only able to tie in multiple type elements it'll allow you to exploit elements uh, elemental weaknesses and do tons of damage that way not only that, uh, at the end of turn, Alma does increase crystal type attacks of all party members by up to 60% or 15% per move of crystal done that turn, very similar to other type of elemental um, zone setters. And she is a powerhouse in her own right. Uh, first of all, she does. She is a crystal lunatic mind's eye. So that's very similar to Clart AS. And for those who have Clart AS, you'll know that mind's eye increases damage um, and healing by 50% and increases a weakness multiplier. So against enemies like, with weakness, she's going to do a ton of extra damage. Not only that, but once you activate uh, lunatic, it'll give her five arcana stacks. And at the end of that turn, which you activated Lunatic, she'll now convert those five Arcana stacks into Trance Mode. Trance Mode lasts three turns and increases power int and speed of her by 50. Not only that, she guarantees her own crit for any move of hers, magic or physical, 
to 100%. Uh, so that's very, very useful that way. And her moves um, can exploit weaknesses. So one of the most um, useful moves is the brain record, which basically places a unique stack called a scope on a single enemy and changes almost attack element that is her mo mo all her moves are normally crystal it'll change her element to the target's weakness element and is permanent for the duration of the battle now i'm assuming that if the enemy has no weakness it won't change anything however obviously if you know ahead of time and can they um you know exploit that she will now be able to be fit on multiple teams and convert her moves to that enemy's uh, elemental weakness not only that but if she's not in af this scope allows you to detect the stats on a single enemy. So you'll see it's HP, MP, um, you know, the normal spirit and endurance and all those other interesting things as well. So for those who are really uh, crunching numbers, this is a great way to find out all the defensive stats or offensive stats of a certain enemy um, in the game. Her two uh, five-star moves are extremely powerful. Uh, one is a crystal pierce AOE times two XL. Double damage when the enemy is weak and if you've already applied scope, it multiplies that damage by 10. So uh, at the top level, you're getting a 20 times multiplier on her base attack, which can really wreak havoc on the enemies. Uh, even if it's not weak, you're getting a very high mod anyways. And keep in mind that she is, um, her base stats in terms of power is very high. And so you're going to get a lot of physical damage on the enemy. Now, don't worry if you're into magic teams. Alma also has a magic type crystal magic attack on a single enemy, and this one inflicts poison. Just like ES Mew, it will ignore barriers and it will ignore uh, status immunity. So it'll basically um, go right through barriers, which is very, very interesting and useful. One of the few units in the game that can do that. And this magic move is based on the user's power so not based on int like most mages so again if you boost her power either through her own um, move like trance or equipment or even something like as Yifa, you're going to have extremely powerful moves and this move uh, benefits off the trance state which is 15 times multiplier and a, it uh, places a scope on the single enemy so note that um if you do a one turn AF, for example, you won't have the trance state because trance state kicks in at the end of turn. However, you'll still have the benefit of mind's eye on the first turn AF, for example. And then at the end of turn, she'll convert into trance and then you'll be able to, if not already won the game, you probably win it on turns two and three. Um, if you're using her from the back and VCing in for crystal zone, then you'll have other ways uh, to win the game, I'm sure. And yeah, very, very interesting, very, very useful quite versatile and again our first crystal zone setter i'll talk more about her and my thoughts about her uh, in my should you summon video tomorrow so of course there'll be another dungeon after um, finishing chapter two i understand this one will be a very long chapter and so um, i'll t probably take my time in uploading content as i get through the chapter and of course for those who are interested in summoning for alma there is the normal uh, free banner there is also a fateful two times max banner for Alma and they're going to fix the fateful encounter which is the seven day so of course I was on vacation during the beginning of the month and so the seven day encounter came out however I did read afterward that there were some issues with that banner so they will um, now restart that banner tomorrow and I will talk about it again in my should you summon uh, at first glance having uh, black clad swordsman as well as the other two units featured are uh, pretty good but like I said I will uh, quickly talk about that tomorrow as well so in terms of this new event um, not really sure too much about it but as you can see if you've already unlocked uh, certain aspects of the grass system which is chapter 54 of the main story you'll be able to bind Grasta. And so I believe you can just do it any time instead of just going to a Grasta shrine, like one of those cat shrines. So it'll have you um, some more um, flexibility when arming or making Grasta from what I understand. So you'll be able to upgrade Grasta directly from the menu instead of coming and visiting um, the hidden village I twice, which will definitely save you a lot of traveling time like I've always done back and forth when doing boss fights or just modding my um, Grasta setup to take on various content in the game. And of course, um, if you've already finished the first chapter of Apocrypha now, you can replay that um, in the um, downstairs uh, replay stair. For those who love Annabelle, 
now you can trust your cat like Annabelle as well. So that's very, very interesting. And just as a reminder, even if you are free to play, make sure you do the monthly quest to get at least two Meow coins every month. I believe you, in most cases, you just have to run one of those Unigan theater things. And so make sure you check under trials, do those um, trials every month, get a couple of Meow coins, a couple of stones. And of course, if you have the subscriptions, you'll get even more than that, like free keys and whatnot. And for everybody, Hey, more stones. We all like more stones for the next two weeks. Update of 50 stones login every day instead of 20. So that's a 30 extra. Keep in mind that you can still run your videos on top. And so you can easily get 80 or 90 stones every day, which will help in your 10 pulls to search out either um, Alma or maybe some of the other units in the game. And finally, if you start the Phaetum Argentari, you will get 50 stones instead of 10. So, lots of information to um, digest, a lot of interesting uh, banners, new story content, and of course new bosses and dungeons to uh, explore. So let me know in the comments how excited you are for this update, um, whether or not you are going to pull for Ama, are you saving your stones for other banners, are you all out of stones and you'll need to save up because you've burnt on previous banners such as the uh, Radius AS, Yifa AS, uh, Jet Tactician Xion. There's a lot of banners that have just come out which are all extremely powerful so I do understand if everyone here is low on stones. As for myself, as you probably know by now, I have saved up and passed on a number of banners and hoping to land Alma um, tomorrow evening with my bank of stones. I hope I don't go the same way as I've done with um, Eva and Flam, where I get broke ass on this um, game. I'm really hoping to um, get her a little bit earlier and have some stones for future content, but we'll see how RNG treats me. Anyways, Good luck to everyone summoning tomorrow. I'm looking forward to your um, great luck comment and unfortunately, you know, possibly some poor luck. And I do wish everyone great luck in summoning. Um, looking forward to interacting with all of you tomorrow as I uh, continue creating content for the game. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.